uh, what kind of significance did domestic colony have, have in modern Japanese history? And how did the Japanese imperial university scholars think about the role of frontier? And how did they connect with the frontier and development of individualistic democracy, focusing on independent, independent owners and mid-level farmers? So, Tana's thesis uh, opened my eyes to the, this topic. So, after the 1990s, there has been four major trends in colonial studies in Japan. The first was a problematized concept of colony, and the second was the rise of post-colonialism, and third was a focus on attention on ordinary life in colonies, to which colonial life was studied as a limited field of study. And the fourth was a study of empire. But recently, there has been a new trend in the academic world to the colonial study, um, to study colonial policy as an academic discipline in and of, of itself. Oh, sorry. Okay. Could you back? <laughs> no. <laughs> Before 1945, some Japanese universities offered courses of study such as colonial policy, the history of colonialization, and colonial theory. And to distinguish from the empirical colonial studies and express uh, such courses' core motives, I'd like to put all of these courses under the operation of <coughs> colonial policy. In fact, such courses clearly imply the actual for policy suggestions. Currently ongoing academic uh, colonial policy research remains limited individual case studies, but in the near future we will be able to trace the genealogy of the Japanese colonial policies of academic scholars. In this presentation I will describe one such genealogy that which began at the Sapporo Agricultural College, SAC. It's a list of the professor of colonial policy at the Japanese University and colleges. <coughs> it is not widely known that colonial policy in modern Japan as an academic discipline was launched at the imperial universities by some of the earliest Japanese Protestant Christians who had been educated by U.S. scholars from New England. The oldest strong form of this discipline was SAC. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sapo Agricultural College was a most old, old strong uh, university <coughs> of this discipline. And Founded in 1876, which later became Hokkaido Imperial University. And the other influential center of this colonial policy was Tokyo Imperial University, at which the first professor of, for this course of study was Nitobe Inazo, who had graduated from SAC. As an Institutional dis design to train future government bureaucrats. The newer, the Tokyo Imperial University's uh, program as foreign policy emphasized the political subordination of foreign colonies. But Hokkaido was a domestic colony, and the SAC's primary mission was to train human resources 
who will be able to cultivate frontier lands. The older discipline of colonial studies at the SAC, by contrast, focused on agricultural colonization based on overpopulation. Some of the SAC's graduates immigrated to the Japanese colonies and engaged in the public and private efforts towards agricultural cultivation. In this presentation, I will examine the colonial policies taught by Sato Shosuke and his student and successor, uh, Takaoka Kumao. Both professors at Sapporo Agricultural College, where they became a very very university, using, using their articles and the lecture transcripts, I will analyze their theoretical background and discuss how these Christian scholars taught policies at their alma mater. It will focus uh, an aspect of U.S.-Japan relations and intriguing, intriguing fusion of the Christian mission, universal love and human brotherhood, and agricultural colonization as immigration. As you know, the U.S. served the model of, for Hokkaido in terms of how to develop colonial frontier land. Hokkaido was originally the land of Ainu, the native people. In the Edo period, Tokyo government explored Hokkaido and contact with the Ainu. But the full trust investigation and cultivation started by a major government. A major government will take an assimilation policy for the native people. In 1871, just four years later, after the Meiji Restoration, Kuroda Kiyotaka asked for a from then the U.S. Commissioner of Agriculture, and uh, the um, President Grant, to be an advisor of the, to the uh, Japan's Hokkaido Development Commission. Oh, sorry. He's a uh, West Capron. They are uh, uh, advisors to the Japanese Hokkaido Development Commission. Uh, during his stay, uh, Kefron's stay in Japan, Kefron suggested many ways that Frontier Island could be developed. He introduced large-scale farming with American method, mm -hmm. as well as agriculture machinery and tools. Uh, due to similarities in the climate with New England, and to aid the establishment of agricultural college in Sao Paulo, William S. Clark, then the president of Massachusetts Agricultural College in Amherst, was invited to serve the president at the new college. Clark spent just eight months at Sao Paulo Agricultural College, but thanks to in part of the efforts of the young Amherst scholars, Uh, he had uh, unpicked to the company with him, and who played a vital role as a backdrop of, of courage. He was able to ask, accomplish a great deal. Although SSC was a public college, most of the courses were taught in English as a U.S. agricultural college, and Clark introduced Christianity to his students. And one year later, the influence by Clark's Christian zeal, all of the first students became Protestant Christians. The early graduates of SAC were greatly affected by the American Christian atmosphere at the college. And in the later years, they were called the Sapporo Band, a group who was a, one of the old strongholds of Japanese Protestantism. Although they belong to the different Protestant denominations, most graduates maintain a deep faith in Christianity all their lives. When Clark departed from Sapporo, he left his students the following injunction, always be ambitious. But ambitious in such to what? That is a question. After graduate from SAC, 
Sato Shosuke, who was a one of the class Christian students, studies history and politics at First American Graduate School, Johns Hopkins University, where he was a classmate of Woodrow Wilson. Sato finished his dissertation entitled The History of Land Question in the United States, and he received his PhD from Johns Hopkins. It seems to me uh, there are two background factors influencing him to choose the history of land problems as the topic of his dissertation. First, at that point, there was a massive ongoing debate in Japan over how to distribute the Korean public domain to the people. In fact, sparked by the problem of land pro pattern in Hokkaido, a major political upheaval occurred in Japan in 1881. Secondly, Sato was influenced by the progressive atmosphere in Baltimore. Although Homestead Act has passed U.S. Congress in 1862, there seemed to be no end to illegal purchases of land exceeding in the, the land limits. While Sato was the U.S. in the 1880s, uh, progressives proposed specific uh, reforms, such as regulating working hours and irregular land speculation. And they targeted labor problems at huge farms so-called Bonanza Farm. So uh, you, you, can, you couldn't find anything. <laughs> so. The young professor, Richard Ely, at the Johns Hopkins, was one of the leaders in the, this progressive campaign, the Social Gospel Movement. He organized a Christian association to denounce the social diseases. It is easy to infer that Sato, along with so many others, was strongly influenced by E, as evidenced by the fact that he continued to maintain a personal connection with E, keeping in touch even after he returned Sapporo. He translated his uh, E's uh, some work, some books. Sato originally, Sato's original motives was to solve the problem of the poverty in Japanese rural villages and to transform Japanese tenant farms into development, uh, independent landowners. Right after he returned from abroad, Sato, who had been appointed a professor at the SAC, wrote an article on large-scale farming. He wrote that it was impossible to adapt American large-scale farming method to inner Japan, but it will be possible in Hokkaido. Using figure on cultivated areas, uh, he quoted the example of West Coast of U.S. and referred to the U.S. Homestead Act based on family farm. Sato insisted that ordinary, ordinary farmers in Hokkaido would be able to consider farms large scale at 40 acres, the minimum size in the homestead, U.S. Homestead Act. He encouraged immigration into Hokkaido in order to create large scale farm, family farms at minimum size, but that uh, in reality create mid size uh, farm and middle, middle class independent owners. But within the few, few years, Sato's colonial policy underwent two drastic changes. His idea began to conform to consensus view and start marching into the, in the step Japanese national interest. The first change started around the 1890s, 90. In spite of his here for here to for moderate ideas, he acquired four hundred ninety four acres from the public domain and began to run the Sato farm, thereby reflecting changes in uh, governmental policy toward Hokkaido. 
it was a proponent of form in the dress sense, whose size was more than three times the maximum stipulated in the U.S. Homestead Act. Before he possessed of the land, the maximum limit on the ownership according to the Homestead Act law in Hokkaido was deregulated, mm -hmm. thereby allowing the large scale cultivation by only a handful of wealthy individuals. Moreover, in 1897, the Meiji government further increased the limit to 1,200 acres as an exceptional regulation, thus uh, aiding the absence land, land growth system of the large landowners, which was continued until the post-war land reform. Uh, going with the flow, uh, Sato persuaded his students to take leadership role in Hokkaido land development as, as large-scale farmers who were land, land owners and counseled them to invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. The second turning point in the evolution of Sato's thought was the Russo-Japanese war. After the war, his focus shifted from domestic colonies to foreign ones. Quote, uh, to increase the nation's wealth, rural reorganization is now absolutely necessary. The rural population must be spread. The rural districts are too densely populated, and the lands are too finely divided among the cultivators. Therein lies the necessity of either home or holding colonization for the well-being of Japan. <coughs> the ideas of immigration abroad were supported by his Christian confidence mm -hmm. in the belief that tendency toward the universal brotherhood of mankind will gradually overcome all national borders. Some of the students and ideological successor who integrate agriculture colonization, colonial policy research at SAC was Takao Kakumao. When it became obvious that the American large scale agricultural system could not, in general, be applied to agriculture in Hokkaido, the Denmark model that was that of uh, small agriculture holdings attracted widespread attention. Similarly, uh, the Japanese government policy toward Hokkaido agriculture also gradually transformed into a policy based on the, the theory of the general historical school. Such a policy was seen more realistic because the general model was based on national communalism and dealt with domestic social conflicts that accompanied, accompanied by the development and progress of capitalism. After graduate from SAC, Takaoka studied the problem of Hokkaido development in comparison with German colonial policy at the University of Bonn and Berlin University. Takaoka's uh, colonial policy has two key premises. The first notion we can see in the 1910s. From 1907 to 1916, a chronical depression grieved Japanese society. So called the social problem emerged. And the agrarian depression brought tremendous poverty and ruin to many farmers. The protection of Japanese small farmers was one of the main issues for Takaoka and other scholars who returned from Germany. Unlike Sato's classification, Takaoka classified farm size not by figure of the cultivated land area, but by types of farm. Uh, using the interpretation of German scholars, uh, Takaoka grasped the small size farm 
was one who practiced agriculture merely as a means of subsistence. The large farmer who could employ many workers and approach his agriculture as a business did not fit the current Japanese situation. But Takaoka stressed encouraged mid level farmers who would be able to get some additional income from sales, their products, and their aid, their family members. According to Takaoka, there were two possible solutions to economically improvement, improve a lot of subsistence of farmers. The first was to increase uh, farmers' income by expanding the size of their field. And the second, to send the farmers into a thinly populated area. These areas he shared with Sato, and this notion, these ideas shared with Sato. Takaoka proposed that his second premises, especially after the Manchuria incident. Manchuria was a special colony to Hokkaido Imperial University. The Faculty of Agriculture went all out mm -hmm. in studying uh, immigration when Japan set up Manchukuo. Takaoka advocated a colonial policy of coexistence, co-prosperity for both new settlers and the native inhabitants. He encouraged uh, technical education for natives so that they would extend their economical power. The Japanese settlers, on the other hand, should put down roots in the colony as a permanent immigrant, love the colony, and communicate with the native inhabitants, pursued not in secure self-interest, but permanent mutual benefits. Thus, the name of whole prosperity Takaoka legitimized the massive agrarian immigration to Machuko. <coughs> In the mid 1920s, the faculty in colonial studies at Hokkaido Imperial University was strengthened. The colonial studies department was now distinct from agrarian administration and research branches into many areas and was assigned to young scholars. Nakajima, Shin, uh, Nakajima Kuro, who studied under Iri at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, and Takaura Shinichiro, Takakura Shinichiro worked on Sahari, and Ito Toshio and Uehara Saburo focus on the South Sea Island. Ueha Takakura and Yajima Takeshi studied Manchuria. And Takaoka Kumao oversaw all these projects and their leaders right, in organizing them. The main task of each project was make suggestions for Korean policy based on their field investigation. Because Taiwan and Korea was not agra agrarian immigration, immigration colonies, but investor, investment colonies, these professors did not cover either of them in their research. But later, the graduate Negi Shibenji and Ito Toshio would accept the post at Taipei Imperial and Seoul Imperial Universities, respectively. Examining the history of academic tradition of Korean policy in Sapporo, we can point it out some shared ideas and characteristics. First, the original motives of Korean policy was to reduce poverty in rural Japan. So policies were developed that encouraged poor and mid-level farmers to immigrate to the frontier of Japanese colonies. In the colonies, small-scale tenant farmers will be able to become a mid-level independent landowners. Second, except in few aspects, initial American large-scale farming method was not sufficient to reform Japanese agriculture. 
Instead, immediate necessity began to standardize the meat legal farmers, family farms, even in Hokkaido and in the other colonies. The third, due to Japan-centric or imperial-centric viewpoints in these policies, the other native or peripheric, uh, peripheric, peripheric groups were neglected. Uh, in spite of their concentration on agricultural motivate, motivated immigration, the cost of their focus was enormous. Compared with the colonial policy of Yanefa Tadao, the successor of Nidobe, who later taught at Tokyo Imperial University, Sato and Takaoka's statement seems rather naive. Yanagara concentrated his research on the social conflicts between new settlers and native people, and he admitted that hand in hand with economic development in colonies, a movement among native population demanding the right of the political self determination was inevitable. Moreover, Yanehara denounced the process of Japanese militarism in Manchuria. Most professors at Hokkaido, by contrast, did not discuss the native people, even the Ainu of Hokkaido, in their research. The one exception was Takakura Shinichiro, who was influenced by Yanehara, but his book, The History of Policy for the Ainu, he supported the major governmental uh, assimilation policy. And fourthly, underlying their phrases of co-prosperity and universal brotherhood, we can see evidence of their simple but very naive Christian faith. After 1945, Korean policy courses of study disappeared from Japanese universities. Yet, even though such courses were reorganized into international economics, international politics, and international relations, the economic legacy of Korean policy studies was inherited by later scholars. After the war, a population barrage was predicted due to all the returning Japanese refugees from all overseas colonies. Hokkaido was again paved as a place to accept this flood of war refugees. And Hokkaido University professor who engaged in colonial policies advocated not only the immediate development of Hokkaido through their personal connection, but also post-war agrarian immigration to South America, such as Brazil and Peru, mm -hmm. uh, citing their experience of Hokkaido. Thus, it is clear that the history of colonial policy at Hokkaido Imperial University, which had its roots in Korean thought, originating among Protestant scholars of New England, had far-reaching and unexpected consequences for modern Japan. Thanks very much. <laughs>
they committed to the other community to the, to promote to immigrate agrarian immigration to the South America and maybe 1950s, early 1950s, uh, many Japanese farmers moved uh, immigrated to Brazil and Peru, South America. And uh, as I mentioned about that, uh, is a, one of the experiments to move Hokkaido and they move Manchurko and then move. What about Hawaii? Was Hawaii considered? <laughs> uh, I think Hawaii is a uh, very early era, 1890s. So, uh, yeah, Korean policy scholars did not mention about uh, Hawaii. That's interesting. Yeah. Because Hawaii was colonized by America in 1893. Yes. During the Spanish um, uh, yeah, War. Yeah, mm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Sensei, you may be aware of the fact that uh, Ito Hirobumi, before he became Prime Minister, came through Salt Lake not, not, not too long after the Meiji, I believe, and uh, they were caught in Salt Lake because of the snow. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't, there's no transportation to the east. They became acquainted with the Mormons then. There was a proposal that they enlist some Mormons to go to Japan, to Hokkaido, to help uh, uh, in policy, I don't, I'm not sure what, practical means, to help the immigration uh, into uh, Hokkaido as a frontier. Mm -hmm. And then later, uh, in 1901, the first uh, Asian mission of the LDS Church Mormons was to Japan. 1901. 1901. Mm. I, I never heard that. But uh, the story of Ito Hirobumi, I know he traveled east, I believe, with uh, Angus Cannon, one of the leaders of the church. They became well acquainted, and there was some discussion, but I, I, we don't know, I don't think, uh, the details of those. I, I don't know if anybody's been able to look into the records of Ito Hirobumi mm. for details, but uh, this is a bit of information. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about the uh, Ito Fuyomumi's uh, uh, documents, but uh, most of the documents are now microfilm, so I, I will check. <laughs> I will check uh, the, mom, the relationship between the Mormons and Ito Fuyomumi. They were They were very welcoming of uh, Mormons, LES people, uh, soon after the turn of the century, 1901. Mm. One, one follow-up on, on, on this very issue and then another question. Though. My understanding is that one of the early Meiji era foreign advisors, a, a gentleman by the name of Charles Legendre, actually proposed inviting the Mormons to be agricultural colonists in Hokkaido. He said that the, the, the concern was that enough Japanese from, from the other Japanese islands wouldn't want to go, and so you need to get a group of people to, to colonize it. And the Mormons seemed to be a, a, a good candidate because they'd been kicked out of everywhere else, and, and they were good, hardworking people. And so, so yeah, if you want to follow, look up Charles Legendre uh, because uh, he actually—I'm not sure if he was assisting Kuroda's Bureau of Colonization or not—but but he, he actually proposed this very thing in the early Meiji period. Yeah. Uh, question is about the decision to, to decide that Taiwan and Korea were investment colonies and therefore not worthy agricultural, uh, ag agricultural uh, colonies. Was that the initial decision that was made, or was it after the failure of attempts to encourage agricultural migration to those places? Yeah, so some, uh, yeah. Korean and Taiwan, they have, they are, the land is not so big, mm -hmm. huge. Uh, Manchukuo is a very huge, best uh, land, and not so cultivated. And so, one of the reasons is a uh, land problem, a uh, landscape problem. And but uh, Korea and Taiwan's colony, Korean policy is uh, 
political matter, political polarization matter. So mm -hmm. Tokyo Imperial University was uh, concentrating the mm -hmm. uh, political subordination to mm -hmm. Korea and Taiwan. And Yanagihara and the other scholars, uh, Nitobe is also the specialist uh, Taiwan, Korea. And not agricultural immigration, but the sub political subordination. Nation. So it's a different random kind of case. In that time period, besides Hokkaido, what was the most uh, beneficial and successful colonization in that time period for, for Japan? <clears throat> The most uh, profitable, or, or or most helpful, or most beneficial for Japan. What, which time period? Oh, this this time period. The the at the this whole time period we're talking about. The, uh, uh, late nineteenth century, or the yeah, late nineteenth century, very early nineteen hundreds. In Hokkaido, or the end of end of period. Yeah, or in other areas. What other areas were very beneficial or successful for Japan in colonization? Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, after the Russo-Japan uh, Russo War, uh, Korean policy is changing uh, from domestic colonies to foreign ones. So, um, in the, the early 20th century, just changing the point of view for to the foreign colonies. And the most successful one is uh, Manchukuo, after the Manch Manchuria incident. So, 1930s was the uh, uh, most, maybe most uh, influential uh, case. Where is Manchukuo? Manchuria. 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 Nigeria? Manch Manchuria. Manchuria. I know the northern part of China. No, oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Let's say, the, what is the connection, the relationship between these colonizers, the mainland of Asia, and the Gunbatsu? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A huge, huge question. <laughs> <laughs> Colonizers. Today's my talk is uh, on the academic scholars and agricultural colonizers, but uh, Gunbatsu is a military. It's uh, different from the agri agricultural immigration immigration immigrants. But uh, and they have some relationship, but. <laughs> I don't have a prepare for the experience explanation. So. Mm -hmm. If you had a chance to look at Uchiwara Kanto, does he have an opinion about the colonization in his writings? Yes. Um, I'm very interested about Uchiwara Kanto. Uh, he is a, a non church Christian, and he has uh, some writings about colonization. And He agreed what uh, 1924 and 19, you know, the early one is 1930, 13, and, and later 1924. The U.S. Uh, discriminate the Japanese immigrant. And Uchimura very angry with that U.S. movement. Uh, one of the reasons is uh, he, he saw the land is a gift from God. So we share the land, each other, immigrant and American people. So um, he very angry about uh, Only Americans cultivate the 
or cultivated areas. So he's, maybe he supported the agrarian immigration to the East Asian countries, Manchukuo, and also Korea. He supported to the agricultural uh, immigrant. And but he, on the other hand, he diffuses the military, Japanese military, uh, advanced. Yanehara Tadao is one of the disciples of Ichima Kanzo, and he pointed out the Japanese military uh, evil behavior, and he accused, uh, the, but because of the, uh, his anti militarism, he quit the, his post from Tokyo Imperial University. So it's very, how do say, complicated, but uh, Christian faith and Hokkaido instead and current colonization. It's very complicated, but uh, um, it's very interesting for me for <laughs> the intellectual history. Yeah. Uh, kind of related to that is, um, um, since we're talking about the uh, Christian uh, scholars that are doing uh, uh, the agricultural colonization, I'm, I'm curious to find out how much of Christian motivation, as opposed to, let's say, colonizing the place, uh, I mean, is there any kind of, um, I'm sure there's a relationship, right, that the American Christ Christians went to Japan to colonize, um, or to help colonization there. But the, um, uh, especially when Japan started to uh, go out to the uh, different parts, uh, such as Brazil or Hawaii, or, uh, in, in terms of colonization, they're more politically motivated. Mm -hmm. and, but the, uh, as according to your uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, wonderful presentation here, uh, all these people are uh, Japanese Christians. Are they, were they more mo motivated by Christianity or were they more motivated by the uh, political necessity of going to these uh, places to call them? Mm. Maybe they were very enthusiastic uh, Christian mm. or deeply faith, they have deep, deep faith uh, the end of their life. Uh, Sato and Takao Kumao and Yanehara and they had a little bit also, but they had uh, different denominations. And so, in a personal com confidence, they have Christian face, uh, universal love, and universal brotherhood, and love each other is uh, one of the motivation one of the main motivation to the to expand uh, agriculture, but uh, yes, also uh, they have many political and social reason they have. So, do you think the Japanese uh, military people or the Japanese government people kind of utilize these Christian uh, academic leaders? To, uh, or did they use them in a way to uh, go out to these other places to colonize? Or what? what is the relationship, as you can see? Yes. The, one of the example is uh, Nito Bay and Goto Shinpei. Goto Shinpei is uh, one of the uh, highest uh, bureaucrats, and they ha he has uh, some relationship between the militaries. And Nito Bay and Goto Shinpei is very close. Uh, Nitobe, he got the position, Korean, Korean policy professor position, Kyoto University, and Tokyo Imperial University. It's one of the main factors, is reason is Goto Shinpei's recommendation. And so, in that sense, Goto Shinpei uses the Christian Nitobe 
to encourage the Japanese colonial policy in the academic discipline. But uh, Nito Bay and the other Christian professors, they maybe they didn't think there there are the puppet. <laughs> they, they are not puppet. Uh, the politician and military, military armies. Now. So <laughs> it's very complicated, but very interesting for me. Thank you very much.